The Weekend Australian Magazine, May 2020. Well, back in March, when the realities of COVID calamity were looming, Brewer, Richard Adamson, faced an unusual problem. It was a dilemma that in days of yore were considered a blessing. He had too much fear. Adamson is one of the founders of Young Henry's, a craft brewery based in Newtown, Sydney. And since it began in 2012, Young Henry's had muscled its way through a crowded, highly competitive field to become, a, to become one of the premier independent brewers. And then it faced the prospect of drowning in its own success when the government announced severe social distancing restrictions, including turning off the taps at pubs and clubs. Adamson had more than 8,000 cakes, 400,000 litres of lovely beer, sitting in basically warehouses that he couldn't sell. Young Henry's also had a gin distillery, and not long before restrictions, it had distilled some bergamot essence to use in a fancy beer. We had heaps of this alcohol bergamot essence, and it smelled fantastic, Adamson says. As the virus was getting worse and worse, we thought we could turn some of this into hand sanitizer and put it behind the bar for customers, which of course we did. People were like, wow, we can make this? Can you make some more? It was then that we realized how much demand was out there. And there are similar stories around the country. Companies converting to produce ventilators, personal protective equipment, um, and people just don't understand the capability that a lot of Australian manufacturers actually have. Hartley says, we are very advanced in what we do and what we can pivot very quickly because, of course, of our skill set. So for us, making orthotic or making a printed face shield is essentially the same thing. They've also been able to be called upon to, to print ventilator parts. Andrew Livers says this type of business that Australia needs to support so they can actually scale up to become global powerhouses. When you think about advanced manufacturing, you don't think about textile looms and pollution, he says. That's yesterday's manufacturing. We need to, we need to be in drones and robotics and renewable energy and, and really process food for export, not just a primary producer. Livris says environmental concerns need to be at the forefront of our thinking in building this new economy. Young people care about the environment like no other generation before has, he says. So if you say renewable energy and you say recycling, you say preservation of resources um, on the planet like water, let's invent technologies to go there. Let's educate our young people to seek careers in this and reskill our existing workforce and to get them out of yesterday's industries and into these industries of the future. And this is exactly what the Smart Centre has been working on. We've actually been enormously successful in developing new technologies and working with industry and manufacturers and looking at ways in which we can use our waste materials to create new industries, new products from stuff that would have otherwise gone to landfill. In fact, one of our successes of green steel has been about using waste tires in the process of making steel, which has been a win-win outcome for our steel makers, for our industries that would have had to now be concerned about waste tires. Likewise, now we're actually making plastic filaments plastic filaments out of 100% recycled waste plastics and using these plastic filaments for 3D printing. Imagine if we could actually produce these customized products on demand, on tap, right here in Australia to manufacture products that are made out of 100% recycled 
plastic input feedstocks so that none of these waste plastics ever had to go into landfill, but they could in fact be recycled over and over again so that advanced manufacturing and recycling could actually work together in harmony for the benefit of our planet and for our economy.